Bank of Japan saw that unemployment rate went up this week, which is great because that would make them a bit more cautious. We also saw that core inflation in Europe has slowed down, PMIs came a bit more dramatically than I expected, and ECB's Wunsch says it is too early to start discussing rate hike pauses. Go figure. For this upcoming week, as I said, we have RBA, we have <coughs> BOC, we have some ISM, we have some retail sales, but we have wage data coming out of Japan on Friday, which is quite important for us because that is the other side to labor, which labor market, which Bank of Japan is currently waiting for. When it comes to America, we had NFP on Friday, which came in and at 107,000 new jobs. And I'm like, well, that is a bit lower than our optimal average, which is 200,000, but it's higher than expected on Friday. So that led to some commotion. Lower interest rate expectations for America because now we are seeing that, you know, they are now pricing a bit more in on only one rate hike by December. But this one that is going to be a one rate hike is was one month ago on 26%, then a week ago 45%, and then back down to 30%. So it's got, but it goes up and down like a broken swing gate. So it's kind of like, what is that for? Why why is this important? It's because this expectation for future rate hikes, which is directly drives price either up or down. And as you would go over to the dollar, you were like, okay, so what did the dollar do? It rose quite heavily. And you're wondering what is going on? Another thing to this madness was that on Friday, we had the average hourly earnings, which came in a bit lower than expected. But if you take that and then you compare that to what is the other important number out here is that America's inflation rate. And if you look at the inflation rate is 3.2, wages is 4.3. Wages is higher than inflation. They have now crisscrossed or crisscrossed. That is it. That is important because inflation is lower and we still have higher wages, then these wages are also going to come down at some point because we have come to a conclusion in the, in the society that whatever prices are provided to the consumers are no longer possible to, to sustain. So therefore, prices go lower. So dollar is currently going higher. We have seen CPI going a bit higher. It is what was it? It was 3.5 instead of 3.2. So we, you are probably going to see some dollar bullishness going ahead. And which will only be amplified if they're coming. There is more higher, better than expected data points. We have one more inflation before, you know, the next uh, FOMC meeting. And there's a page book on, on Wednesday. So we have to really look into that in terms of are they going to take into consideration the current uptick in inflation and the current uptick in GDP. For Australian dollar, US dollar, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess around with these dollar pairs. I'm just gonna say okay, it's bearish. I'm not I don't know if it's gonna fall, but if you want to short it, I have talked about this 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 week, it should be up there. So right now it's more like a ah pause it. You know, up there is kind of where you should have, would have, could have, you know, would all those things. You're quite late in a trend. And if you say, but but Ivan is going to break lower. Well, it is kind of going to break lower, but does it matter? Yes, I could have sold up here. Yeah, okay. There's would have, could have, would have. I currently don't have any trading plans here, and it's currently quite end of the trend. You, you, you want to do trend continuation trades then. Okay, that carries higher risk. So if you come to me, which people have done, be like, I'm losing money on the Aussie dollar, on pound dollar people have sold. And I'm like, bruv. Sell it, fine, do whatever you want. I'm not going to tell you what to do because you're going to find out what the market kind of would want you to do because somebody tried to sell it down here. We had a discussion about it. I said, that's not a good That's not a good time. Price went to stop loss and now it's falling. And now you'd be like, oh, it's FOMO, bro. Look at that, it's falling. You're wrong. No, that's not how we do it. It is, where's the best price to sell? Up there. Are you at the best optimum price at this moment? No, you are not. You might be able to sell it if it breaks lower. 
But it's kind of like, bro, you're late. Wait for a new bearish trend or something. I don't know. It's currently not bearish. It's overall bearish, but this is quite range bound. And you're current, quite, quite, currently quite low. So you have to either do it, wait for a break lower or a break higher. Um, you need to have a way different setup. That's what I'm meaning. Australian dollar, US dollar. Um, came back to my buy zone. Um, I would argue. Uh, so I still have some trades on here. Great, great, great. Back to entry. Good, good, good. Um, I am going to try to look for that. That is dependent that RBA on Friday don't chop my legs off and say we're going to cut. So as long as they do their normal things, I hope that this is going to be great to the upside. Um, seasonality, by the way. And you're wondering what seasonality, bruv? This is the current day. And we are supposed to reach a high somewhere between 12th to 13th, 7th, 13th is what I've said. But so we still have some this week and maybe some next, some two days next week of bullishness. And I think that Australian dollar currently, Japanese yen, is in a great spot for that. That is yen weakness. CAD JPY, another one that is supposed to have talked about at least some bullishness, but did absolute opposite of what I wanted it to do on Friday. It whipshot all of my trades out. Smackdown, it hasn't made a higher high. It even made a lower low. Closed. Did I buy that one? Nope, I wasn't even pre 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 present. So what am I going to do now? I'm going to wait for this one to either make a higher high and say, hey, bros, we're actually going to go higher. That's going to make me a lousy entry. Okay, I will do lousy entry rather than no entry or rather than buying in a bearish trend, which is down here. I can't. It is not in my blood. It is not how I trade. I want to trade continuation trades or a reversal of trend. Do I have anything of that? Absolutely not. So I could not care less whatever is going to happen here. For the euro yen, I we have, thank you, we are supposed to have like a dip and then rise again. Again, another yen pair rising and another yen pair smack down on Friday. Um, generally, what my what is my what is my current position? My current positions are quite quite break even. I posted in the um, I posted in the Discord my positions, ha, all my close ones. I think I was got out of it with like fifteen dollars, probably out of it. So. Peanuts. Not what I want. Um, and up here, I was... How much was I up? I was double the account. So, you know, heartfelt. So, so sad. But, you know, let's see if this one can make a brand new hard high tomorrow. So, for before any trades I can do, Catman do, I need to see that. And until that is happening, whatever. Do you want to buy opening on Monday. Should you be buying uh, this lows here? Which is kind of like, yeah, why not? That looks like a fantastic idea. Other than it carries higher risk. So if I do that, should you do that? Probably not. An M1 and M2 next week is around 157.38, which is, you know, below these lows. No, sorry, <laughs> below the current end of week. Last week, meaning if you come down here, it's still a perfectly bullish trade. Overall, it's not completely horrible. It's just that it's a bit lower than I would expect. So what am I expecting? I'm expecting kind of like just out of the books like this one, just gone higher. No pullbacks whatsoever. That's kind of what happens this week. Because we're turning into what, 3rd, 4th, 4th of September? Yeah. Mm, we shouldn't be here 4th of September. We should be up here. That's also why I'm so surprised. We fell so hard so fast. But hey, am I am I, am I making the market? No, I'm just reacting to it according to my rules, which is higher, high, higher, low. Or down here, one of those going, going forward. Purchase pound Japanese yen. Another one that kicked me out. And I need a higher, high, higher, low before I can even start discussing anything so Mike make your words I will go I will do that two in two seconds I just saw, saw what I need to do we're gonna mark out target for the weeklies New Zealand yen okay that was a good close on Sunday wasn't it on Friday sorry so higher high higher low continuation higher 
uh, everything else is bland. Am I going to trade USDN? I've seen people trading USDN, and I think most of those people who trade USDN has been knocked out. So let's go over to this one. Uh, Australian dollar, Japanese yen. We have the target for this week, 95.35 on the weekly. And then I don't think I can add one more. Nah, I can't. Oh, I need upgrade. Okay. Then we will go to monthly. There we go. And we're going to say that's my first target, 95.35. And my second target is 36.60. Do you think that can be possible to hit? Well, we'll see. That is for 200 pips in a week. Yeah, let's see if it's possible. Weekly on CAD yen, no, monthly on CAD yen is 109.24. And weekly is much lower. So what are you going to do when it reaches through the weekly at 108.55? I would take a target there and I would take a target there. I want to take something off there, something off there. And then if it doesn't go up there, then it doesn't go up there. Then it's easy peasy lemon squeeze, isn't it? 160 and then monthly. I'm actually going to do that instead, actually. Monthly is around 160.87. So that is 87 pips extra, give or take. And I would argue that most of our trades is going to go off there if I know myself correctly. So that is this week's expectation of 350 pips in one week. It's possible because last week we were gone 150, 160 before it fell down. So fair enough. British pound, Japanese yen, weekly is 186.36, target is 188.78. And I'm going to go for monthly here. Take something off at weekly, of course. 87.80 on monthly. So weekly, 89 on monthly. Let's see if that one works. So there's a two steps to this one. One is weekly target. One is the, the other one is monthly target. Who's going to be hit? I don't know which one is going to be hit. I don't really care who's going to be hit. I just know that if it hits it, I'm going to take the, my profit off. Um, how, how are you going to get entries? You're going to get entry by waiting for the high and higher low. If it doesn't, then there's no point of wishing for a bullish target. Secondly, um, price action is going to be fast, so you need to be either in early or you need to uh, get in aggressively. Now, this is where I say, don't trade like me. I know what I'm doing. I'm only losing my personal money. There is nothing in me that wants you to trade anything here. Watch it. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, no clue what I'm doing. I'm going to have daily meetings. Uh, with my mentorship students, I am going to maybe do some YouTubes, but I've been burned last week. I'm not going to go into details of that is, but I will going to be more withdrawn. Uh, I have been giving you the plan now, giving you the what you need to look for, higher highs and higher lows. You need to look for support. You need to look for trend continuation higher. They have, I have given you the targets of you can use whatever you want. doesn't really matter. I'm not going to give you any advice. You do you. But I'm at least going to follow this approach. And if it all, if all falls down like a ton of bricks, then it does. And I'm the only one hurting. Okay? Have a fantastic week.